I want to start this video off by saying that these stories aren't the kind of stories where you will sit in your room terrified, but instead to let you know that these kinds of things can happen to anyone, and that you should be aware of your surroundings. Because even in a public restaurant, you can witness some pretty terrifying things, or even worse, they can happen to you. Let's begin. This happened about a year ago in my first semester of college. I went to art school in New York City and my sweet mates and I had a craving for fast food at around 12.30 a.m. We, of course, decide on the McDonald's down the street because, you know, we're classy as fuck. It was me, my sweet mate Kat, and her boyfriend Tom. We order our food, Kat and I decide to split a shit ton of chicken nuggets and we pick a table by the door. Tom and Kat are sitting next to each other, holding hands as couples do, and I'm sitting there being the awkward third wheel and gorging myself on chicken nuggets. In walks a slightly disheveled gentleman who starts to wander aimlessly in the direction of the register. We think nothing of him. I watch as he goes to order his food and turn back to my friends to chat. Suddenly, Kat mutters, Anna, behind you. So I turn around and there's the slightly disheveled gentleman again. This time, he's holding a flashlight. I turn back around to Kat and shrug, figuring it's just some harmless weirdo. I feel a tap on my shoulder, so I turn around again and the guy asks, the light isn't working in the men's room. Can one of you hold this flashlight while I use the bathroom? Uh, seriously? Cat, being the nicest and most outgoing person of the group, responds first. Maybe you should tell an employee that the lights don't work. I bet they could figure it out for you. I'll only be a minute. The guy mutters and holds the flashlight out to us. Could one of you just hold this while I pee? He insisted. Tom answered next as I was determined to ignore the man. No, just go ask an employee to go fix the lights. But I'll only be... The man began again, but I interrupted him with a firm, fuck off. It was a weird situation, made only weirder when, as we were leaving, Kat said, You know, he never went into the bathroom in the first place. How would he know the lights didn't work? I was living in a low-income housing apartment in Minnesota, and at the time, my mom and I simply couldn't afford to have an actual internet provider. This meant I leached off of people in my building who had an unprotected wireless connection. Whenever their internet connections would go out, I would be forced to walk down to McDonald's in order to use the free Wi-Fi there. This had become a pretty common thing for me. On one of these internet droughts, I was standing about in the lobby of my apartment about to leave when the guy who lived next door to me, an older guy named Joe, stops me before I go. He tells me that him and another of my neighbors were going to McDonald's for coffee and that he'd buy me one if I went along. I figured, why not? I didn't really know much about Joe since I mostly kept to myself. Now, let me explain Joe. He's hunchbacked with a beer gut and his ZZ Top-esque beard was full of food crumbs that I can only assume were from a McBiscuit. But he seemed like a nice guy, so I went along. After a ride in his rickety truck through the Minnesota winter, I was happy to finally reach McDonald's. Ah, free Wi-Fi at last. And, if Joe held up to his word, a free McCoffee as well. I sit down and fire up the laptop to soak in all that free Wi-Fi, and soon after, Joe comes back with our McCoffees. As soon as he sits down, he starts asking me in a raspy voice, So, boy, ever heard of God's DNA? I look up from the Windows loading screen and ask, Um, what? I was totally baffled and thinking, great stuck with another fucking missionary. Damn it. 
He goes on to inform me that God's DNA is the molecules that hold the universe together, not to mention it's what makes men genetically superior to women. I sure as shit didn't learn that in physics class, so I blew him off and when I got the chance, quietly ducked into another booth to browse the internet in peace. He didn't seem to notice because afterwards, a barrage of freaky, bearded, lumberjack dudes would come in and out of the McDonald's and talk to him for like 15 minutes at a time. I can only assume they were talking about God's DNA because I did my best to not pay any attention, but Joe and his gang of weirdos still gave me a very creeped out feeling. I could tell that they kept looking over to stare at me when they thought I wasn't looking. Having had enough weirdness for the night, I decided to duck out when he hobbled off to the bathroom. I assume only to take an epic mix shit. I took my chance, folded up the laptop, and headed out to brave the cold Minnesota winter on the way back home. I reckoned that having to put up with the elements was still preferable to being around a bunch of weird looking lumberjack creeps. I was almost back to the apartment when I heard the truck slowly rolling up and crunching in the snow. I looked over my shoulder and I saw Joe in his truck. Next to him was another one of those fucking bearded bums from McDonald's. I waved to them but I got no response. Whatever, I thought. I went home for the night after that creepiness. But then, after that, every time I went to McDonald's either Joe or one of his weirdo lumberjack buddies would be there. I could practically feel them leering at me. They always appeared grungy and disheveled. Forced to go to McDonald's just to use the internet, I tried avoiding them as much as possible. It almost seemed as if they knew ahead of time that I was going to be there. Considering they all had a relationship with Joe, I think it was very likely that they actually did. Eventually, someone broke into Joe's apartment and stole his bike, prompting him to move elsewhere. I learned a couple things about Joe after he left the apartment such as that he traded most of his food stamps every month for drugs, and that he regularly told women in our apartment that he wanted to, quote, leave his body in spirit and ravish them in their sleep. Whatever that meant. After this point, I saw the McDonald's stalkers only sparingly and then never again. I've never really thought of this experience as a particularly scary one, but the feeling of being trapped strangely resonates with me to this day. For a little bit of backstory, I was going to meet up with my friends and future roommates at the realtor office. We had all met about a week previous and already pooled our money together in order to pay for the apartment's rent, a steep $3,500. I was more or less taking the lead on finding and acquiring the apartment, therefore I was also delegated to holding everyone's money. I'm a particularly timely person and don't like being anywhere late, so I managed to get to the realtor's office about 30 minutes early. Having missed lunch, I decided to just get a few things from the dollar menu at the McDonald's next door. I walk in and it's your fundamental McDonald's, a few college kids, a few homeless people, and an older Asian gentleman sitting at a table by himself, next to the bathroom. I had to go to the bathroom, so I make my way over there and walk into the bathroom to do my thing. It's a one person bathroom and the door was broken a bit, disabling it from ever being able to fully close. I start to pee when I hear a few steps from behind and a weird chuckle. I'm usually not good at stopping peeing mid-pee, this time however, I was on point. I turn around and see him trying to close the door behind me and clumsily fumbling with the standard silver lock that are in these types of bathrooms. My mind, knowing I have $3,500 in my backpack, instantly goes into fight reaction. I lunge over to him and grab his shoulders, pushing him up against the wall and only manage to say the words, No, 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 
While I'm saying these things, he's still smiling and chuckling the whole time, which is the most vivid thing I remember from this whole thing. I then push him out of the way, leave the McDonald's, and go straight to the realtor. It is fully possible that this was a normal guy, expecting it to be a bigger bathroom, and for that, I give him the benefit of the doubt. That being said, I'm still morbidly curious what would have happened if I didn't manage to stop peeing halfway through that day. So, I work at a small McDonald's in an even smaller town in the south, and I've encountered many strange people and seen some really fucked up things so far. But I saw something today that I thought I would never see, and I was shocked at how many people didn't notice what was taking place right in front of them. I was working behind the counter at around 7pm, and we had lots of people in the lobby and a few children as well. I like kids, so I usually watch them play around in the lobby because they're really funny, but I got distracted by the large amount of customers we had to serve and ignored them for about 15 minutes. I looked back when I heard a man ask in a small voice, almost whispering, So, how old are you? I turn around to see this extremely tall guy with a shaved head and a red shirt talking to a little girl who looked about 5 or 6. He had a little boy around the same age on his shoulders who was giggling. I saw that they were happy and the guy seemed friendly, but something in my head was extremely worried. I had a huge suspicion upon seeing this that these kids were not his. I mean, after all, what grown man would ask a little girl how old she is? And if he knew who they were, wouldn't he already know? Why would he care? But. After this, he said something that made my heart sink. You should come with me now. I have a little brother who's six too. Let's go play with him. He then began to walk to the exit with the boy on his shoulders and the girl tagging along and I immediately shot for the door to stop him. I did this just as a lady with blonde hair came out of the bathroom shouting, Hey, where are you guys going? Get over here! The tall guy froze with eyes as big as saucers. He was fucking petrified. The lady then scooped the little girl in her arm and reached for the boy as the tall guy lets him down, stammering, Oh, oh, I was just playing with your kids. They're really nice kids. I just really like kids. He said this all at once with a nervous smile. The blonde lady then faked a smile back but still had eyes that clearly said, Stay the fuck away from my children, you fucking creep. But her mouth ended up saying, Oh, well, I'm glad you had a nice time, but we need to order now. And then she led her kids to the back of the restaurant. The tall guy then hurried out of the front exit and the lady clutched her kids close to her the entire time she was there, even in their booth. If I ever see that guy at work again, I will immediately call the cops on him. Who knows what would have happened to those kids if I wasn't looking, or their mother hadn't come out of the bathroom at that very second. I think that it's awful that she left her kids unattended in a full restaurant lobby, but no one deserves to lose their children to a disgusting creep with a sick grin like that. Hey, the video's over, so don't listen to this part of the video unless you care about me and not just the stories. So, just a little update for you guys. I want to do a video on scary dating app stories, so if you have any personal experiences on websites like Plenty of Fish, Tinder, you know, sites like that, please send your stories to me. Real experiences only, please. And remember, it doesn't need to end in you almost losing your life or something intense like that, as long as it's plausible, like if you get stalked or something creepy. If anything like that fits something that happened to you, email your personal story into the email in the description. 
Anyways, now that that's out of the way, I was wondering if you guys would be up for some fun shenanigans in the future. I know this channel is just something for you to listen to, but I think it'd be fun for us to all start a hashtag on Twitter or maybe get a celebrity to tweet at me or something. Like, for example, 500 of us tweet at a famous rapper telling them to tweet at me or just maybe show some love to the corpse army. I think it'd be pretty funny, and I think a good first target would be members of the FaZe Clan or other big YouTubers like that who are somewhat responsive. It'd be pretty funny to see them comment on my videos or something. I don't know, I just think it'd be a fun thing for all of us to do together. That way it's more than just talking to you guys, it's working together to get something done in a harmless and fun way. But if you're not for this, just let me know. I just like interacting with you guys more. Okay, so that being said, on to updates about the P.O. Box and the giveaway stuff. So, like I said about the fan mail slash gifts you send me, I still might possibly be doing a fan mail opening video. I say possibly because I have no idea how I am in front of a camera, and if I end up being horribly awkward, I probably won't do one. But if you want to send me some stuff, hopefully nice stuff, my P.O. box is in the description. Please don't send me money. I don't want your money. And as for the giveaway, I'll probably make a video tomorrow showing the winners because if I don't, people will probably say I faked it or something. So yeah, look out for that and you have one more day to enter it. The link to that video will be in the description as well. Anyways, that's it. You're all awesome, and once again, please let me know if you guys think the Twitter thing would be a fun idea, and if you'd partake in it. Because it means nothing to me if, like, for example, Carl from The Walking Dead tweets at me. I mean, it'd be cool, but not as cool as saying, Wow, look how cool Corpse Husband subscribers are. They just work together to make Carl from The Walking Dead respond to them. The Corpse Army is to be feared. Alright, <laughs> well, have an awesome day and stay safe.